All right, guys, so let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start off with all the ingredients I'm gonna be using for this recipe. All right, we're gonna start off, we got some beef broth here in the back, some more Chestershire sauce, got our spices here, got some allspice and smoked paprika, and got some bay leaves. Um, we got some tomato paste here, some kidney beans. Let me um, go ahead and use a disclaimer that um, for this recipe, usually people use lima beans or butter beans. I'm not really a big fan of lima beans at all. So I decided to use kidney beans because I like the flavor. So you can use dark or light red. Um, we got some olive oil, got some um, cornstarch there. Um, also guys, got some um, sea salt, black pepper, you know, staples or whatever. Um, you can use regular, um, black pepper but I got coarse ground also guys got some um, ginger and some garlic paste um, usually you can use minced garlic or uh, ground ginger but I'm not a fan uh, I'm well I'm a big fan more of these in the stews and, and soups so it's not that the other ones aren't good it's just that I like these in stews and soups so all right, you're gonna use a yellow onion too that you're gonna dice up. Um, also, um, got some uh, uh, thyme here. Then I'm gonna use a couple of sprigs of, um, really just to impart some of that herby flavor in there. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna use the whole bushel. Um, also, got some green onions. I'm gonna use the whites to saute with the other onions. And then the greens are gonna go in last. Also, got some habanero peppers. We only need one. Um, you can use two if you really like a spicy soup or stew, but um, really, uh, you only need one. That's all it's gonna take. And um, also, last but not least, we got the oxtails themselves. Probably about six or seven big oxtails that already have salt and pepper uh, and olive oil all on them. That's the first step you can do. And you kind of clean them off, get any impurities off. And um, yeah, so we're gonna get started, y'all. All right, guys, so um, just got our veggies chopped up right here. Our green onions, white onions, and habanero. And got the thyme. And after we brown our meat, we're gonna go right in the pot with those. All right, so just start off with your, uh, your pot, your Dutch oven or whatever you're using. Some olive oil. Then you're gonna take your um, seasoned oxtails and you're gonna start going in the pot. You're gonna wanna brown these on all sides, brown knees on all sides. So that means the side sides that you see me putting them on and the little flat sides with a little circle in the middle, you're gonna get all that. You're gonna brown all it up. And let me tell you something, whenever y'all doing any type of uh, stews or you cooking these um, meats in a pot like this, whether it be oxtails, ribs, anything you're doing in a pot, Brown it up first. If you're doing a uh, pot roast, brown the roast first. That good, it gives you so much flavor because brown food tastes good, so brown it up. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. It already looks delicious, and it's tough as hell. Excuse my French. But it already looks wonderful. So guess what? Whenever that gets in there, all that liquid, that's going to taste delicious. Oh, my gosh. So go ahead. Pull all these oxtails out of the pot. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're about to brown your veggies up. And so you see, like, um, they make a little bit of extra fat, um, you know, um, with the olive oil that's in there. So um, when you pull them out, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Those look like they're ready. They ain't nowhere near ready, but they look delicious. You know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. So, um, oop, no, I lost that one. Come on. Come on. All right, so, you're gonna, um, if you got a little bit of extra oil, just strain some of it off. You don't need all of that. Um, but if you got, it depends. Not everybody's spot gonna be the same. But I strained a little bit off, and then I'm going, um, directly in there with my, um, the whites of my green onions and, um, my, uh, uh, yellow onion. I use the whole thing, um, <clears throat> I believe. And um, also, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get that stir real quick. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but um, get at a quick stirry stir. Like that. You know what I'm saying? I like to brown all my veggies when it comes down to stuff like this. Like when it comes down, like just like I brown the meat, I brown my veggies. And even if, um, if I don't brown the meat, so if anything that calls for chopped veggies and it's gonna be like, um, 
<clears throat> something that's gonna cook for a little while. I don't just throw it in the pot. A lot of times I brown it, man. If you brown your food, it tastes so much better. So yeah, I just went in there with probably about a tablespoon and a half of each the garlic paste and garlic ginger. Then I added the uh, habanero that I chopped up. Like I said, one habanero is enough. You're gonna get that heat um, throughout the uh, stew. It's not gonna be too much either. It's gonna be edible for your whole family, just in case you have anyone who um, really doesn't like heat. So um, <laughs> that was about to slip right there. But once you got the veggies browned up, go ahead and add your spices. That's the smoked paprika and um, all spice. And um, also you're gonna add tomato paste. You're gonna add um, probably about, this is concentrated tomato space. So if you just have regular tomato space, you probably wanna add like a heaping uh, tablespoon. That I probably add about um, a tablespoon and a half of that. Um, also I add a little bit of soy sauce in there. Um, this is optional, it's just for flavor. And a little bit of Worcestershire sauce um, as well. That's just, this is just things that go well with beef. Soy sauce goes awesome with beef. And so does the Worcestershire share, of course. And so um, you're gonna really just mix that. That tomato paste is probably gonna go down. It's gonna become more brown as you continue to stir it. You don't want this to burn, you know, because um, it's a thicker liquid now and it doesn't have as, or it's more of a paste. It doesn't have as much liquid in it. So that being said, you just want to be careful. All right, so now I'm going to start adding the oxtail back to the pot, and then I'm going to come behind it with our beef stock. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> beef stock is basically just the, um, the bones of beef, you know, cooked up with some water and seasonings and other stuff like that. So it give you a richer taste than a broth does. Even though, you know, it's debatable, but that's what I'm using. I'm using the beef stock. Beef stock is always going to be richer, and if you're using beef especially, you want to use beef stock. But give it kind of like a stir to make sure that the um, bits on the bottom are not just settling on the bottom, because that will burn. So you do want to make sure everything is in there. Um, kind of together. Once it comes to a boil, I'm just put your lid on there, but leave kind of a crack. Dutch oven lids do not have a hole or anything in there, and you do want this to be able to reduce, so you um leave the lid cracked a little bit, turn your heat down to about medium, low, low, medium, whatever. After that's gone a couple hours or so, you're gonna go in and you're gonna remove your um, thyme sprigs and your bay leaves then you're gonna put your uh, your beans in and then um let that go for a little bit and then um not long enough probably about 30 minutes then you got your outcome give you some mashed potatoes or some rice or some rasta pasta anything that you want to put this over it's a delicious stew and you know boom i put it over mashed potatoes as you can see it came out wonderful and so i want you to really try this recipe guys i hope you enjoy it's aj Peace out.